uh, it's pretty much a movie. Like it's pretty like the storyline is great, you know, you, and you really get invested in it where it's where it's something like an anime where anime is like, like I always compare anime to game to like games, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Because you never know who's going to die. Because <laughs> somehow, some way you get super invested into a character and they kill him. You're like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. And and you see that that happens to some characters. And it's just like Full Metal Alchemist. They do that a couple of oh, times. Dude, I almost dropped a tear when when they when they when they killed the guy. Like you, you meet his daughter, you meet his wife. Maze, yeah. yeah that and, just, and ten episodes, uh, then they off him. You're like, what? Yeah. That makes sense. Well, in Brotherhood, yeah, it, it, they kill him off pretty quickly. But in the original, we know him even longer. We know we know him even longer. And if you ask me, I think his death hits a bit harder in the original than it does in Brotherhood because of just... Well, number one, the music. Yes. The music, in a sense, in certain regards of the original, is better than Brotherhood. Yeah, I said it. Because uh, I know there's going to be some anime diehards out there who, anytime you compare the original Full Metal Alchemist to Brotherhood, they're just like they're just going to say like Brotherhood is superior in every single way. Period. End of story. You know, it's like, and it's just like, can't we just agree that the original still did things in such an amazing way? And yeah, there were some dumb stuff, but yeah, you know, just accept the fact that they did some stuff that was better. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. You know, but- uh, I have a friend, uh, my friend Tony. So he reads every anime. Like he re- he reads the manga, you know. Oh. So, so he reads the manga, and he he gets the the Shoto Jump books. Damn. Yeah, yeah. The, the jealousy, right? The fucking jealousy. It's like how come we can't read Japanese? You know, it's like super jealous. So, um, rats. And, you know, the way that he explained anime is if it's not selling as far as merchandise, they'll fuck their accent. So it's like you'll have you'll, you'll have some great shows and you're like, man, I'm super invested in this anime. And you're like, what happened? And he goes, oh, well, it wasn't selling. So, <laughs> it, so, so the viewership doesn't really matter. It's more about how much product can this show move? But and at the same time, I feel like I don't know why, but this is just this is just my bias. Uh, I feel like the these anime, I feel like these anime writers they get lazy, and they're like, you know what? Yeah, I they're like I'm over it. I want to move on to something new. And yeah, they'll, they'll that, a lot like Game of Thrones is what yeah. Benny Off and Weiss did. They're just like yeah. like you know, we've been doing this for five seasons. Yeah, yeah, we're we don't want to do it anymore. Exactly, exactly. So it's like you like for instance like uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, you know, there's 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 no reason to stop writing it. It sells, but like I'm tired of doing it. I don't want to write it no more. Like like we're tired of writing this. We we want to move on to something new. And it's like, yeah. fuck, you're killing you're killing something good off. You know, you're killing something great. You know, just just because you just because you're bored of it. And you know, but you know, sometimes you know, I feel like flex certain companies should, should be like the people from Dragon Ball Z and say, we don't care what you think. You're gonna write it. <laughs> yeah it, you basically well and, and and you see it's important that the writers don't have like, it's important to, to have an outline of where the story is going yes and i think that that's i think that's something that uh for instance uh scott pilgrim versus the world when they were making the movie the graphic novel or the the not the the comic books still weren't finished oh. and uh Brian Lee O'Malley, the guy who was writing it, basically uh brought like brought them the uh like the finished print and like gave them the full outline of like the story arc and everything. Yeah. And they changed the ending because the ending was supposed to be completely different yeah. from what it from what it was in the theatrical version. Yeah. What we got in the theatrical version is a lot closer to how the comp to how the comic ends. Mm. Whereas, you know, originally and there were a lot of people who were upset about it. We're just like, it's just like, this just doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like this is how the story would end. And then when Brian Lee O'Malley released the ending, everyone was just like, oh, this is the ending. This is the ending we've been waiting for. Mm. And then when the movies finally did it, you know, made the right decision, exactly. everyone was just like, it was just like, 
this is right. This is how it's yeah. supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And, and you see, Game of Thrones, the original plan, I looked it up. Originally, HBO was 100% down for 10 seasons, you know, 10 episodes each, so 100 episodes. Mm-hmm. Instead, because Benioff and Weiss wanted to just, like, get out of the thing as quickly as possible, and HBO didn't want to get rid of it, because whenever you have people who are just like, yeah, we just want to move on to doing other stuff, we're, we're mm-hmm. not happy, let them go. Yeah, let them go because there there are people who were there, you know, David Nutter and Miguel Sapochnik, who are more than capable of of carrying the reins. They mm-hmm. showed that in the episodes that they directed. So I would have just been like, okay, what's the outline? It's like, okay, let's do the complete outline. And and instead, Benioff and Weiss at the end of season six were just like, we're going to change up everything so that we can end it super quickly in like thirteen episodes. So. I have a book that I've read that had a, a very similar circumstances. Have you heard of the book, The Wheel of Time? The Wheel of Time, yes. Ah, uh, one of my one of my favorite books of all. T- I love that. <laughs> so towards the end, the, the the writer dies, and the wife ended up finding Brendan Sanderson, who I, I don't understand how he does it, but the guy's a madman. He is literally a madman. I don't get. He writes a new book every four months. So he's on that Stephen King shit. Well, you know what? I like to me, I I, th- I think he just sit, I think he sit, just sits home and plays MMO MMOs all day. Like hmm. to be that, to be able to create so many different site like like uh science fiction novels, like you have to watch a whole lot of science fiction movies and say, okay, well, I can do this, I can do that, because you know, uh he finished uh the writing style was a little different from 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 uh from the original from the original writer but you know he kept it he kept it kind of the way that i'm pretty sure the original writer would have been, would have been happy with it and i'm reading another one of his books called Mistborn and in Mistborn he has it's about maybe nine books in right now and then he has a, another series called The Way of Kings, and that that one is is maybe six, six seven books in. So he, but he has a cult following, and it's like, yeah, he's like, oh well, I, I'm I'm a uh, a teacher at BYU. I go, I go, how do you have time to teach if you're <laughs> if you're writing this many fucking books and you're dropping every four to six months? You know, it's that is the that is the question of the day. Yeah, but e- even though the uh, have you have you have you watched the uh, the Amazon series? No, I have not. Uh, it it honestly, I am I. There's very few shows on Amazon that I that I trust uh, because it's not in the hands of the of like of like Amazon like Amazon approved writers. Yeah. Uh, for instance, The Legend of Vox Machina. Mm. Which, it's a uh, it, Legend of Vox Machina, is based off of a D and D campaign that a bunch of voice mm. actors were doing in their spare time. Oh wow! And the voice actors basically it was on a show called Critical Role. Mm. And it lasted forever. It was like I think it was years that this show last or that this uh D and D campaign lasted, and they basically were like, oh, y'all like it this much, and you know you uh. Here's some illustrations. What do you think of the illustrations? They're just like, oh my gosh, I'd love it if you actually made this into a TV series. And uh, my camera's doing a weird thing. There we go. But uh, there was like, oh, I'd love it if you all did a, a TV show uh, to this. And they did a Kickstarter. They basically were like, okay, let's do a Kickstarter. And they did the Kickstarter. It was successful. And in the midst of them producing episodes for it, Amazon comes along. It's like, hey, uh, we'll distribute it on our platform and everything. And we'll also... Uh, give you all a little bit extra budget to finish it. Mm. And there was one clause, one clause that the people who were running the campaign, you know, ran the D&D campaign had. They're like, every single one of us is seasoned script writers. If someone's going to write these episodes, it's going to be us. That's it. And they they were just like, that's it. And thus, and thus because of the deal they signed, uh, you know, the, the people 
who are who control you know the the uh, what is it the the board of uh the the creative board the cre- the cre- yeah the creative team the creative the, the the creative board at amazon who in certain regards have their heads up their ass big time basically had no input at all on uh on on uh the legend of vox machina and it's easily the like my favorite show on amazon so that's you so, for the wheel uh for the wheel of time like what, what, what were your try. thoughts uh, so my problem with the Wheel of Time was they didn't stick to the to the book, of course. Like, but they also they went they went away a lot from the book. So in the book, you know, me me and one of my boys we talk we talk about that book, like like crazy. Like like we go into our own kind of world with it. So one thing that you know, and of, of course, like we know that you know, um. We know that, you know, everybody has their own mindset when it comes to certain things, but it's like certain love scenes weren't in the book. So it's like, yeah. so if that's not in the book, why would you put it in there? It kind of, it, it complicates the story a lot. You know, so, <sighs> so it, compl- it, complica- it complicated the story a little bit and you're like, all right, so where do they go from here? And, you know, that's, it- <laughs> painting yourself into a corner once again yeah. it's the it's the creative minds that want to think that they know what mm-hmm. you know what people want out there and they're just like oh we're we're just gonna you know we're gonna you know put these two characters together why mm-hmm. well it's because uh you know there's a certain sect of the fans that want them to get together it's like but that doesn't benefit the story it's like doesn't matter we're doing it well it's just... i think when it comes to like lord of the rings that bombed Awfully. <sighs> Rings of Power. <laughs> yeah. I I I have I could say a thousand things about Rings of Power in terms of just uh, in terms of breaking the canon, in terms of just completely disregarding everything that's come before. Yeah. One of the most rich and one of the most beloved lores in all of fantasy. And you just- and you break it because you feel like it. Basically, it's just like the, the people at Amazon can't help but just swing, you know, just swing the dick around and yeah. fuck everything up. They well, can't help it. I think and I think that's what they were doing. It was kind of like, oh, well, you know, we're going to we're going to we're going to force you to like our way. If you don't like our way. No. Then, and then it's like, OK, oh, well, they didn't like it. And we're getting bad reviews and we're losing money. And then and then, and then the, the bosses are like, what the fuck happened? Like, we trusted you guys and you guys just totally dropped the ball on it. So it's one, it's, it's really one of those things to where it's, it's kind of a clash between people. People want to be too creative when it's like, if it's don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It does, does it didn't need fixing. Well, you, you well, can't. well, you're not thinking in a, in a more, in a postmodern mindset, you know, we have to make things needlessly complicated because yeah. It's the only way that, uh, you know, people can say that we're different. It's like, I heard someone say that one time. And it's just like, it's just like you, you're you adding complications. On it. It's just like, well, we have so to you, differentiate ourselves. I'm like, no, no you don't. No, you don't. You know, no, it, no. It's one of those things where it's like inclusiveness. It's like, no, Lord of the Rings, nobody, nobody's complaining about Lord of the Rings not being inclusive. No. <laughs> you know, like. Because you, because you have dwarves, elves, humans, you have uh, the orcs, you have. You, you you have various rate you have the wizards you have various races exactly and that, like, that are already there exactly so why so why do you think that you have to push certain things on us like we did we didn't ask for it so tokenization we, that's yeah. all it is it's needless it's needless tokenization yeah. that these companies it's all they know how to do yeah. they're gonna push needless tokenization of characters mm-hmm. And they're going to be like, and they're just going to be like, we want to show the world that we're woke and that we, that we care. It's just like, y'all don't give a fuck. Y'all want the dollar bills. And guess what? Your gamble didn't pay off. You're pissed off about it now. And you're going to write scathing, like, like, like tweets about how, you know, the fan base of the Lord of the Rings is just racist and bigoted and this and that. That's all they do. It's like they, they push the envelope. And they and you know they gamble with the fate of their with of their stuff, and when it doesn't pan out, they play the victim. 
every single time. Well, and you know, I don't get that, dude. Well, you know, like.